Hello everyone, happy Friday yet again. It is Friday, June 11th, and secret, 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 we have our member preview weekend weekend happening right now at the Museum of Making Music. We have opened, uh, we'll be opening up to the public in on Tuesday. So it's only a few short days away before you can come and visit the completely remodeled Museum of Making Music. And we're already getting our members inside to check it out. Uh, if you want to learn more about what's going on at the Museum of Making Music, go ahead and visit museumofmakingmusic.org slash reopening. And we'll be happy to get you some admission passes, some reservations, and show you around. Other than that, today is going to be super exciting because we have music advocate, educator, musician, uh, uh, <laughs> Julia Kamanda Jordan. Her uh, Actually, it's funny because I know her mother. She was a colleague here of ours at NAMM, and I've actually, actually worked with her father, Stanley Jordan, for a concert at the Museum of Making Music with Muriel Anderson. So it's a, an extreme pleasure to have her music has traveled through this family like a river and continues to impact so many lives. Uh, Julia's work uh, is with uh, students and younger audiences as she promotes music and music making and the benefits of that. But we also have our very own Mr. Bill Kilpatrick, who's going to be leading our discussion today, exploring her life, her career, and her work in music and music advocacy, and so much more. All right, are you all ready today? Hey, Julia, welcome to the show. Hey. Thanks, thanks for having me. Uh, well, I'm glad to have you here. Yes, thank you for being here. BJ, what a great introduction. You always do that so well. Thank you. Julia, this has been wonderful. I mean, already we've had some great conversations. I feel like we've we known have. each other for a long time. We uh, have. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Music has a way of connecting everybody, even yeah. if they haven't met face to face or in person. Sure. That's what it's all about. Let me start out by saying, telling everybody, uh, if they want to look into what you're doing, uh, they yeah. can go to www.themusicmommy.com. Uh, right. And B BJ will post that uh, on your listing as well. So people can go check out what you've got going on, which is, as right. we're going to find out today, so many things. Uh, and BJ mentioned that connection with Nam already. Your your mom worked yep. for Nam. Uh, in fact, I think she and Betty Haywood uh, were good friends. Uh, and thanks Very to Betty. Good friends. Great. Hi, thanks. Betty. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Hey, mom. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks to Betty and thanks yep. to mom. We're here together today. Yep. Uh, and as BJ said, I mean, you come from just an amazing musical family. Starting there, uh, Julia, would you say it was kind of predetermined, predestined by the universe that you would become an artist yourself? Ooh, predestined by the universe. <laughs> um, yeah, probably. Mm -hmm. uh, and also predestined by my environment, I think. You know, um, my parents are uh, just lovers and appreciators of art in all its many forms. Mm -hmm. And so growing up in New York City, I had a lot of opportunity to explore different art forms, to you know, take art classes at the Met, to uh, do physical theater off off Broadway when I was pretty young, uh, to, you know, to have my graduation at Lincoln Center from high school. So I was kind of just wow. always kind of surrounded by like, you know, art for art's sake people. Mm -hmm and environments and experiences um, just because they found it important for me to be around that. And it made it mattered to them to be around it for themselves. So they brought me into that environment pretty young. Right. So yeah, I guess maybe it was predestined right. by the universe. Or I love that. Even, even if it hadn't been for any reason, just being around that with mom and dad and sure. all those experiences that had to get yeah. you going in that world. That's fantastic. And there's yeah. some things that, uh, some quotes I have in here that were from your upbringing that I'm going to share that I think are wonderful. Matter of fact, sure. here's one of them. Uh, one of the things you say is that uh, they instilled a love, light, and trusting life's changes mm -hmm. philosophy. Mm -hmm. Can you can you tell us a bit about that? Sure, yeah. So, um, so uh, I guess what I mean by that is, you know, so I grew up in two very different places, mm -hmm. New York City, Manhattan, concrete jungle, <laughs> and Ona, Arizona, like desert, red rock country, hiking, mountain biking, camping, um, you know, spiritual earth center kind of new agey kind of place. 
And, um, you know, going back and forth between those two places mm -hmm. gave me this really deep um, foundation, like a yin yang foundation mm -hmm. of duality, also being biracial, I think is part of that as well. Sure. Um, and so I've always kind of had this sense of being more than one thing, mm -hmm. person, entity, character, whatever. You know, I don't know if I ever thought of it that way with actual words, but just mm -hmm. in my heart, in my spirit, I always felt like that. Um, and so part of that is that it's a, the world is so much bigger than, you know, the environment that you're in in this moment. It's about mm -hmm. all of our connections, which are very musical and the way that the universe is a very musical place. We are very musical beings with our the way our hearts beat, the way our lives move, um, in rhythm with the seasons, with the calendar, with the clock. There's this rhythmic cyclical way that we all live completely unconsciously. Mm -hmm. And I was made conscious of that very clearly as a young person. And so my whole life I've looked for that in the world. And so they instilled a respect for music in the universe mm -hmm. and in my life and in the lives of others from a young age. So they, I think that's sort of my poetic way of saying that, um, you know, you know, there's a, it's deeper than just making music because you want people to clap for you on stage. It's mm -hmm. about making music because making, making music allows me to connect deeply. Right. And so, yeah. Connect in so many ways too, as you say, right. connecting with not just the environment that you live in immediately, mm -hmm. but really the entire planet. And if I get a little right. bit esoteric here, really the whole universe, because it is. Oh, absolutely. This pulsating rhythm of music mm. that's all around us. And, yep. you know, it's so refreshing to hear you say that. And I know you instill that in your own students. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I think that's something that really is not apparent to a lot of the world. And perhaps if they were to let go and, and open up to that, Things have changed a whole lot for the better. Oh, uh, one oh, of our, I'm telling you. Uh, one I of mean, our, I believe so. Yeah, because yeah. then, because then, what you're doing is you're you're looking for connection. Mm -hmm. You're like choosing to find connection as opposed to choosing to find differences and recognizing differences and focusing on differences. Right. You know, people are different, but yeah. we're so much more the same than we are different. Yeah. And at our core, we're the same, yeah. and we we you know, mm -hmm. and we all want the same things, and mm -hmm. you know. So, yeah, absolutely. I wish I wish that that were something that we were all taught mm -hmm. um, because I've just spent my life searching for that and exploring mm -hmm. that and experiencing that. And yes, teaching it. I think that that's a big part of like what I do when I teach sure. is really starting from a place of like, first of all, you are already music. Mm -hmm. So let's just start <laughs> there. So there's no right or wrong. It's not about the dots on the page. Mm -hmm. You don't have to play every note. I'm not worried about that. I want you to feel the music that yeah. you're playing. Yeah. And I want you to create music that makes you feel. Yes. And we'll start there. Right. Uh, because because then other the, people will feel it and feel connected to that. And then there's like this reciprocal experience. Which is one of the best experiences you can have. I know you've had <laughs> this. I've had it. I know BJ has had it. Where people come up after something you've done. And you're right. I mean, the applause is wonderful. But that's right. not really the, the end goal. When somebody comes up and says, I got to tell you, that song that you played, that the orchestra played, really got into my heart and moved me. And yeah. I've had people come up in tears. So then you know yeah. you're connecting and they're connecting. Mm. And that's that, that we are all one. Uh, one of our guests last August uh, was John Anderson. And if you don't know mm. John, you should, because he okay. basically would say the same thing. We're all one. We're all connected with this. Right. And man, we got to get that message out there and get more people, oh, to, more no, people yeah. to lock into it. Um, <laughs> yeah, for real. So you're starting to learn these things, starting to get into the music, the rhythm, the feel that you know is there. Right. Were mom and dad at that point when you really started to aspire and grow as, as a musician, as a performer, did they become more hands-on or were they sort of laissez-faire hmm. at that point? Let you follow you. Oh, that's a great question. Um, my parents were... They were hands-on as as far as I let them be. <laughs> so <laughs> I think you were driving the, the bus. <laughs> I was pretty, I was a really independent person pretty mm -hmm. early. Also, I think being an only child, I kind of was like, I got this. And I just mm -hmm. kind of like, um, 
and being in New York City, jumping on the train with an older friend at 11 to go to rehearsal, mm -hmm. you know, till whenever when I got picked up. So I just sort of like um, I I was very I've always been very self self-motivated makes me sound like I get up and actually have a list and get it done every day. <laughs> so I don't know if self like I'm self-motivated to a point. My lists are often left unchecked, but, mm -hmm. <laughs> but in terms of like the stuff that I feel deeply, I mm -hmm. could, I, I, I dig deep into those things. And my parents always encouraged me to find the things that I felt connected to. Yeah. So they were, they, and, and, and when I wanted help, they were there to help. Um, when I didn't want their help, they mm -hmm. went, okay. And they <laughs> stepped back and let me figure it out, you know, you and, She's um, got this. you know, <laughs> like to this day, it's probably, probably the same. <laughs> <You know? laughs> A little bit of both. Well, I mean, they've got to be yeah. very proud of, of what you have achieved and what you're doing I think and what so. you've done. Uh, yeah, I no, think nothing so. warms a parent's heart more than seeing their kids succeed, whether right. it's in the same path that they chose or something completely different. As yeah. I said to all my children, you follow what, you know, speaks to your heart and do the best right. you can be the best you can with it. And that's really right. all that's important. And that's, so, and that's the same thing I tell my kids too. And they're fairly young, they're eight mm -hmm, and 10. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, look, you know, you don't, I'm not expecting you to be the best. Mm -hmm. I just want you to find what you like, what, what do you, what do you want to do? Yeah. What lights yeah. you up? Right. Go do that. And mm -hmm. do it as best you can. Yes. What, how, do yeah. that the best you can. Mm -hmm. And that's it. That's yeah. all I want for you. Be passionate about it. Be honest about yeah. it. Um, sure. And as you say, do the best you can with it. Yeah. I'm not looking for gold medals every time one of my kids mm. plays a gig. But, you know, right. get out right. there and, and really rock the world with what your passion is. Now, I feel, and I, I'm sure you agree with me, that creative people really have a much broader worldview in terms of global acceptance. And was mm. this one of the principles in the Jordan household as you were growing up? Um, that creative people have a wider worldview. Being being more globally yeah. accepting of right. everybody. Yeah. Uh, that was definitely the case in my house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, you know, it wasn't a particularly religious household, mm -hmm. but I was, um, I was exposed to um, different opinions, different, okay. you know, going to Seder with my best friend, um, you know, because she was Jewish mm -hmm. and going to temple with her because that's what they did. And I was spending the weekend with them, mm -hmm. um, you know, meditating on cliffs around, you know, hippie folks drumming, <laughs> you know, that spiritual and, and a religion, an earth religion of itself, mm -hmm. going to church with, you know, sides of my family. Um, my, my great uncle is a, is a bishop in the Methodist church. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's been like instilling of these deeper kind of spiritual practices and religious right. practices. But um, I think that the worldview part of it is mm -hmm. the bigger thing that I was taught was yeah. that everybody has their own beliefs and mm -hmm. a belief is really something that you, I guess I would define a belief, something that you think so often that it becomes fact for you, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. And a lot of people think different things right? and then those things that they think become fact for them. Yeah. And it, I was taught to respect everyone's um, movements in the world and choices and cultural practices. Mm -hmm. And also, I think that the biggest thing was to be curious about those differences, mm -hmm. I think was, you know, my my dad traveling was really great because I got to go with him. Yeah, I didn't go with him all the time, but mm -hmm. I, you know, I mean, how could I? I was in school, but <laughs> and he's pretty much been on tour since I was born. So, so he's been a lot of places and I've gone to some, yeah, yeah. but the places that he's taken me, you know, like we would go and, and he would, he would put me to work mm -hmm. and, but I would, I would, I would work as like his guitar tech when I was 11 <laughs> in Guam, oh, you know, man. I would like change his strings yeah, and yeah. listen for the speaker and then like go communicate with the sound person what he was saying mm -hmm. that he wanted to. so i was learning how to communicate with people in different places at a young age yeah. uh we would we took a whirlwind four-day trip to egypt to uh and i performed with him at the cairo opera house this was oh, wow. this was less this was maybe 
2009, maybe mm -hmm. I'm guessing. And, um, you know, three hours to the pyramids and back to do our gig, <laughs> you know, and, and it was, it, you know, just, he, he's always encouraged me and my mom as well to like dig in, lean forward into new people, new experiences and new places. And that's what I've always done. Yeah. And what a tremendous opportunity, uh, <sighs> for you to travel with your pop and, and for him doing as much traveling because that really does sort of reduce the whole of humanity to we're all thinking the same in terms of we want to better ourselves, we want to do good for the world, uh, and ultimately realizing that, you know, from one country to the next, we all have these same goals, these same desires. Mm. Uh, and I, I like your your term fact, you know, one person's religion becomes their fact, meditation mm. becomes yeah. someone else's fact, right. uh, so right. on and so forth. And all of these facts, in my opinion, are the same. They have the same goal in mind. We're, oh. you know, we're looking ah, for that. Preach. Yeah, there you go. Absolutely. <laughs> that's exactly, that's exactly it. Right. That's exactly it. And right. music, which is what I was taught very mm -hmm. early on, is that music is an amazing bridge yeah. because I would watch him go to these places mm -hmm. that where he could barely speak. He could, you know, he, he always taught me, learn how to say thank you. First thing, <laughs> learn good. how to say thank yeah. you first. And so that's been something I've always had in my head. Like if I can say thank you to people, if I can't say anything else, <laughs> it goes a really long way. And, you know, I would watch him walk into these rooms where he really couldn't, like there was a translator or there was the, the tour um, manager for mm -hmm. that gig or whatever it was who spoke English, sometimes well, sometimes broken. Mm -hmm. And he would like rehearse with a band of, of musicians from this other country. And they would put on an amazing gig and right. they would, I would watch them find ways to communicate using their instruments, mm -hmm. bouncing things off of each other, trying things, using hand signals, body language, the words that they knew in each other's languages. It was right. really cool to see that. Yeah. So music is a great bridge because we do, we feel that connection to each other in mm -hmm. ways that you can't use language. I can listen to Mozart's Requiem and Lacrimosa starts and I just, burst into tears there's mm -hmm. yeah. you know there's there's no like story in that song for me you know the words are in italian i just <laughs> cry <laughs> you know because exactly. it lacrimosa means crying yeah. and yeah. i didn't know that i just heard it for the first time and just yeah. got chills and just yeah. started crying right. you know and it you feels know feels like crying somebody from egypt somebody from russia somebody from south america would have that same reaction sure nothing yeah. to do with words i don't think so <laughs> but the language of music that is that's so Absolutely. universal. Uh, Julia, your website is is full of so many great stories and adventures, uh, <laughs> right. and you have this positive message. That's just, I mean, as I was reading it, I felt like I was meditating and, and being lifted because All right. you've just got this wonderful approach. And one of the cool things you did of many was you uh, were the co-founder of a creative arts institute in Sierra Leone, West Africa. Right. Whew. Could you share some about uh, this, <laughs> this venture with sure. us? Sure. So it's it's the Creative Arts Initiative. Mm -hmm. um, it's not yet an institute, though. That would be <laughs> okay. that. I that's coming. Um, <laughs> I was forward thinking so, for you. I think right, <laughs> <laughs> but that's good. Forward thinking is good. <laughs> so um, yeah. So um, my husband's from Sierra Leone, mm -hmm. and he um, he is there now, actually, um, and. When, when we first went in 2010 together, you know, he's a filmmaker at heart oh. and I'm a songwriter and mm -hmm. musician, as we know. Mm -hmm. And um, when we were going, we decided we wanted to create something that would um, be kind of like a cultural bridge mm -hmm. in some way. And he was expressing that a lot of the young women in the village where his family is or the town where his family is in Kabbalah, they really don't often have the opportunity to uh, finish school mm -hmm. beyond, um, you know, a certain point, often like eighth grade, roughly. And so their English language skills are not great. And so finding and, and English, I say English, not because like English is the superior language, but because mm -hmm. the language of the government and education in that country in Sierra Leone is English. Okay. So in order to get ahead and get a job that pays well to be able to support your family, mm -hmm. having a good grasp of the language is 
is really important. Yeah. And um, so we thought it'd be really interesting to explore uh, the use and um, uh, of English in mm -hmm. a creative way using the creative arts. Mm -hmm. And so we went in and we started um, the Creative Arts Initiative where we are uh, sharing photography, poetry, mm -hmm. writing, um, and the girls there were writing poems about of themselves. And then I brought those pictures and poems back to an organization in New York at the time called mm -hmm. Girls Talk. And those girls did the same artwork and then we transferred the art back. So they were actually learning about each other mm -hmm. in, you know, um, uptown Manhattan and in Kabbalah Sierra Leone through their wow. art. Okay. And so that's sort of the, the idea behind it at this point. Um, you know, one of the one of the big projects that Ali is doing right now is is a mom. It's an intentional community called Mama Land Children's Community, mm -hmm. and um, it's a safe space and um, a home for uh, girls right now who are unable to be taken care of by their parents for one mm -hmm. reason or another. Many of them are orphans, some of them not, but um, just live in really dire conditions. Mm -hmm. So. Um, so the Creative Arts Initiative is now being built into the enrichment program for the girls mm. in the Mama Land Children's That's Community beautiful. at this point. Now, when yeah, you first... so it's been really cool. It's been an incredible project, just, you know, really heart-centered. No, absolutely. And what a, what a gift uh, for these young women. When you first started the uh, initiative, did you find there was a bit of a limitation to their creative expression? Or were mm. they ready to go right off the bat? Did they jump right in? Uh, both actually, I mean, um, <laughs> they, you know, ready to go jump right in. It was something new, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, they hadn't really been encouraged to be creative and self-expressive before. So, um, you know, it's just, if it's, it's hard to tap into that side of yourself yeah. when you haven't been encouraged, Sure. you know, there's something kind of a little scary about it. There's something that doesn't feel right mm -hmm. here and there sometimes, um, you don't always know what it means. Yeah. So, you know, if I say do, do it however you want, mm -hmm. you know, some people are like, really awesome. And they'll just <laughs> die. But that's safe here, you know, mm -hmm. and some people are like instructions, like yeah. give me what, what do I want to do? Mm -hmm. And yeah. that, that is, I think a limitation, but that can be anywhere really. Um, sure. You know, so for instance, when we do some artwork, like one time with Mama Land, when we were there in 2019, we were actually there with our with our kids. Our whole family mm -hmm. went, stayed for six months, and brought the kids, took them out of school, and we. So they were actually spending half their days, most every day, with the Mama Land girls mm. and doing their enrichment program with them as part of our homeschool thing that we were doing. And one thing we were doing is we were just sitting around one day drawing with chalk on mm -hmm. the ground mm -hmm. and I was saying, what are, what are you going to draw? Like, I want you to draw something and then tell me about it. And pretty much every girl drew the same exact thing, which oh, I thought really? was really, really interesting. Yeah. And in the same way, it was a house, you know, square with a triangle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was a mortar and pestle, which is what they used to, um, grind uh, pepper and onions mm -hmm. and whatever they need for soups and sauces for food. Mm -hmm. So it's like, but they're usually really big. They're like big bulbous, almost like the size of djembe drums, Wow! Okay. but they're open and they have like a big stick and you kind of pound it. Yeah. A lot of them drew that mm -hmm. house, that a tree. And beyond that, maybe a person, you know, they okay. could draw themselves, which I mm. thought was really good. And I, I ended up leaning into that and had them just, you know, explain to me because because that's where I saw a lot of the variation was how they drew themselves. OK. And so then that's where we put our our energy. But I thought it was really interesting. It was like, if you could draw anything, I'm going to draw the same thing, mm. <laughs> you know, which right. was interesting. But then we had an, we then we had an activity where we read a book about a butterfly and I asked them. And it was a butterfly flying over things, mm -hmm. uh, seeing things. And I said, if you were a butterfly, where would you go? Mm. And that question really opened up a cool conversation about what well, I would go visit my mother, you know, or I would go see the queen or I would go uh, to the ocean and see the water. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of variation there. So I think the more we kind of intentionally go into our imaginations, the less scary a place it is, but that's for everybody. I think, I don't think that that, I don't think that the kids are, 
unique in that experience. Adults have that experience. Yeah. It's like once we put our, our, our imaginations away for a while, uh -huh. it's really hard to come back to our imaginations. It, it sure you know? is. Yeah. So. And opening that up with these kids. Yeah. That, that, <sighs> yeah. Let them, that let them be free. Sure. Like, yeah. Wow, you know, where, where would I go if I was a butterfly? That's yeah. <laughs> great. Concept. And there's no, you know, and there's no, they've never had a concept of being asked that before. So it, it really was like, huh. <laughs> and, you know, and they had just had the experience of seeing things from above. So all mm -hmm. of a sudden they were going, I, what would it look like if I was above those things, yeah. you know? So, oh, I mean. yeah, anyway, it was yeah. a good exercise. And, and it sounds like the initiative is still in place and still running uh, today. Then It is, it, you know, it takes iterations and it, and when we first uh, started, it looked one way. And now mm -hmm. that mama land is being built and it's more intentional and there's more girls um, it's, it's, taking on new shape and new form. Ideally, what we'd like it to be is something that allows um, regular cross-cultural arts experiences. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's sort of the, ma the main uh, foundation of what the program would be, but it's, right. you know, it changes year to year, but that's, mm -hmm. that kind of stays the same. That's the We try to share yeah. the artwork here and then go back with artwork that kids here have done. Good. So we can learn about each other through yeah. our art. Yeah. So changes year to year and you're changing lives year to year. And that's, uh, yeah. that's all important. I well, think my life is being changed even more than the girls, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. You know, it truly, you know, I think that there's, there's something real to that because, mm -hmm. you know, I don't, you know, I'm not the kind of person who's going to go there and be like, I know what you need. <laughs> you <know? laughs> I hate that. Well, so even just talking about it, sometimes I feel a little funny because it, yeah. You know, I feel like, you know, I went in and I did this yeah. thing that yeah. I knew that they needed. And that's yeah, not yeah. really the place that I'm coming at it from. It's it's more about it's it's really about finding ways to connect mm -hmm. and um, and using art to do that. And I, honestly, I feel when I leave there, I feel so much more changed. I almost wonder if, you know, if I'm getting out of it sometimes more than the kids, but the kids, <laughs> it's so. hard to say, you know, yeah. <laughs> I mean, in a sense, you're you're planting the seed and then watering it and letting it grow on its own. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that's going to move us right into my next uh, area here because you've got this great music studio mentoring program called J3 Music Studios. There we music are. Studio. <laughs> okay, my red screenshot. walls and my, my sparkly lights. <laughs> <laughs> There's another quote of yours that I love, and I think it kind of sums up your approach here. You say, music is the one language that all of us can speak. Whether you have explored an instrument before or not, you were born into a musical universe and have innate musical abilities. And yep. we've, we've kind of touched on that already. Uh, yep. And it's so true. Now, as you started up J3 Music Studios, what sort of challenges did you face with that new venture? Oh, that's a good question. Um, the challenges that I face are... You know, actually, it's really interesting. My my program has grown mostly by word of mouth. Mm -hmm. So it's grown fairly slowly in that way because mm -hmm. I really haven't, you know, done the traditional marketing. I mean, I sort of do now for, for classes and, you know, right. trying to bring in new students. But a lot of it early on was a student telling another student yeah. or a parents telling other parents, telling other parents. And, it, you know, it kind of grew into the, it's grown into this really cool program mm. of sharing and creating music. Nice. I think the biggest challenge is not so much in the business, but in being a business owner, mm -hmm. you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's not easy to do that. And, um, you know, we're an international family and my business right now is location dependent. Mm -hmm. So it, there's, there's challenges there because, mm -hmm. you know, we, you know, we have to stay put my husband may need to go. Mm -hmm. And it, so that's, I think where the biggest challenge has been is figuring out right now, I'm in a phase of figuring out how to take what I do and turn it into something that I can create a safe space for mm -hmm. anyone, regardless of where they live and regardless of where I physically am located. Mm -hmm. Because I think that the safe space in music and in creating is the most important part. You don't always need four walls for that. Right. Um, so that I think is probably the biggest challenge is how do you grow and shape 
uh, business. I actually, funny enough, I think that the pandemic was helpful in this for me. Sure. <laughs> because yeah. it's sort of, yeah, we were all forced to go online. Mm -hmm. And so all of a sudden I was like realizing that my fear of having four walls where students could enter into the space to feel safe in their creativity, I realized that part of that is just the energy I bring to them. And sometimes yeah. we can do that this way. Yeah. Doesn't We don't have to be in the same room. So I, no. it's been really interesting to kind of see how, you know, things have pivoted a little bit. I think we all have pivoted this year in one Absolutely. way or another yeah. in yeah. many, many ways, you know. <laughs> so many ways. <laughs> so this, this show so right here being a case in point. Right. Uh, so see, <laughs> you, you know, you guys have been able to do, they have these great conversations that mm -hmm. maybe wouldn't have even happened. Right. I mean, this is yeah. such a great, this is such a gift yeah. for musicians and people who are tapped into this, this great program you're doing. And through going on to Zoom, I know you've experienced mm -hmm. that you've been able to broaden the reach. Now you can have students maybe right. from halfway across the country that wouldn't have able Absolutely. To, you know, been able to take advantage yeah. of this. And uh, I do now. I have a student in Colorado and in Boston. And, you know, oh, it's like yeah. it's now as long as I can connect with them, then mm -hmm. we're there. That's you know? it. It's really neat. <laughs> connection. That seems to be the key word it's, today. That's the word. <laughs> so, Julia, when I've, you started the program, uh, was it a yeah. solo venture or did you bring some other teachers along with you or did they start to get added in as the number mm -hmm. of students grew? How did that play out? It's still pretty much a solo venture. I've mm -hmm. had, I've had periods of time where I've had uh, teachers come in and do workshops, limited workshops here and there. Mm -hmm. um, now that, now that you mention it, that I think may be white, another sort of challenge that I've found is that because my approach is so unique to teaching, uh, yeah. it's really important to me that whoever I'm working with, has a similar approach, but it's, it's yeah. a little hard to find that. Yeah. Yeah. Like in terms of having, having that mindset and actively teaching through that mindset. Mm -hmm. So that, so I don't, you know, I, I feel like for workshops and certain things, I'm able to align topics with a lot of other teachers, yeah. but on like a consistent private lesson basis, it's sort of been a little bit harder to find those yeah. teachers. Maybe right. this is my pitch. If those teachers are out there, find me, <laughs> you know, because right. um, that's that's really got to be the basis of what this program is, is yeah. finding that music that's already inside and, right. and building from there. Right. Opening up and building it. And, yeah. you know, plus sometimes it's, it's a little hard to let go of something. Maybe that's the wrong term, but, you know, something that that's that's that close to your heart. Uh, and feel confident that the person that you put in charge of taking this part of it or that part of it is going to share that same passion, that same vision. Right. Uh, right. So I, t I totally get that. Yeah, it's a bit of a challenge, but. Oh, yeah. But, uh, you know, I, I think you probably rise to it and the students are that much better for it. Now, this brings mm -hmm. me to a big question here. Have you ever had occasion to bring mom and or dad in for a session with your students? Yeah, we have yeah, actually. Right. Yeah. In fact, this is a great space for like house concerts. Mm -hmm. So oh, yeah. one of the things that we've done, like our winter concert is a house concert, super mm -hmm. cozy. Um, you know, we put lights on outside. This is a converted garage, mm -hmm. basically. So, you know, the where the garage door would be is a door and we mm -hmm. put like all the Christmas lights and people come in and my mom and I have done duets at no, those house almost. concerts of like the songs she sang me when I was a baby. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. um, my dad has been around for the holidays and he's shared a song or two and dropped yeah. a little knowledge and then, yeah. you know, gone to watch the students perform. And sure. it's a family affair. You know, we're, yeah. we're pretty close as people yeah. and yeah. creators. Yeah. So good. And that will yeah. carry to your students, to the moms and dads, to anybody watching. And of course, that's going to be a great sort of boost for more people who want to contact you and get in touch and, and get this going. Absolutely. Um, all right. I'm going to hit that word connection again, because another thing you say is that you will help your students find a deeper connection to yourself and the world around you. And of course, at the Museum of Making Music, we're all about connections. Now, we kind of touched on this already, but I want to go down this road again. When you see these students connect, either with you as their mentor or with their instrument, what kind of emotional impact does this have on you? Oh, teaching and sharing all of that. Oh, so much. Yeah. Oh, look, there's one of my one of hey, my buddy. children there. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Special guest star today. <laughs> uh, I have to I have to be honest now that now that we got to see my eight year old's body running through. I my computer was gonna die. 
And I was like, Jackson, can someone get my computer charger? <laughs> so, so the kids have delivered and it's fine now. We're good. All right. So he, <laughs> Thank you he guys. He earned his spot on mom at home. He did. He did. Yeah, There's my daughter right there. <laughs> hi. hi guys. Hello, okay. Sienna. <laughs> they Secret say hi. The scenes, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's so funny what goes on behind the screen in these. Oh, yeah. It's like, you know, just life. That's, that's it. Life goes um, on. I was texting Jillian, like, can you get me some Kleenex really quickly? <laughs> <laughs> like, so there's great? a lot going on over here. On, on over here too. Uh, we almost, we almost, uh, we almost got through that whole thing without you guys even knowing it was happening. But, right. um, um, and you were, but uh, you were asking about the students and sort of just my own, like what I get from that. Mm -hmm. I'll be perfectly honest. There was a time, so I was living in LA about um, when my daughter was born, we were in San Diego, but right. uh, my husband and I met in Los Angeles mm -hmm. and, um, and I was working uh, a, credit card customer service job at bank of america mm -hmm. for a good long while <laughs> and that's where we met actually my husband and i he was oh, doing no. the same job as a filmmaker and, oh no way um oh. yeah and so um you know I, at that time i was working on recording my album mm -hmm. and um i was writing a lot and um going to the studio a lot to put all that together right. and i put a band together and we were playing around and it was it was it was great but it was this, it was so weird because there was this i had been i've been performing my whole life i started when i was 9 professionally mm -hmm. and i've you know studied voice and music making all of my life mm. and all of a sudden it, like i stopped kind of like loving performing mm -hmm. and it was a very confronting experience yeah. to not want to do it anymore and right. i didn't know what that meant for me mm -hmm. or like who who am i now <laughs> right. and all the existential like questions i was only i was i was like putting my all into something that everyone dreams of doing yeah and it was exhausting i mean mm -hmm. that life in la is just exhausting so i think it was just kind of all of it mm -hmm. um and the next job that i have was at a contemporary music school and i was doing uh student services and I started teaching community at the community level within mm -hmm. the college itself. And I found at that time that I got more joy out of spending 30 minutes in a private lesson with a nine-year-old mm -hmm. than being on stage for an hour with my band. Yeah. yeah. And that was so confronting for me. I didn't, sure. you know, I didn't understand how that shift happened, but it was very real. Mm -hmm. And, um, so that's where it started to change for me. And I started feeling like I wanted to teach more. I loved watching them grow. Right. I got so, I get so much joy watching a student walk in with a guitar and like, how do you hold this thing? <laughs> you know, like, it's really awkward. Like I can't mm -hmm. see my fingers, all the, my fingers hurt. Like yeah, all the right, right. beginner stuff to like standing up and like rocking a solo in a, you know, like eight months later. Mm -hmm. you know and yes it's a simple solo because they're still a beginner but they are in it and yeah. they've practiced and you know i cry at every <laughs> show that my students do i walk up to the mic i think i'm going to keep it together and i'm like you guys are amazing Boo! you know <laughs> so i love it i just think it's it's really it's an amazing way to give back i see myself in in all of these kids because i started so young myself and it really laid such a foundation for who i am yeah. And I remember all my best favorite teachers mm -hmm. and they're pivotal. Yeah. And so they are, uh, what yeah. they do to shape your life and your path <laughs> and your direction. I'm saying I had several tremendous music mentors, uh, as, as a young boy learning to play guitar and then, mm -hmm. uh, in college, high school and college, and they shape you. And for the rest of your life, yeah. they are sort of speaking through you as you are now doing through your students. Uh, and yeah. absolutely the emotional rush that you get from that is, is overwhelming. So don't feel you have to hold it together. because it's, <laughs> it's so like, <laughs> it's like, I can't help it. Amazing. I'll tell you, I'll tell you a funny little story. <clears throat> 40th birthday, which is at this point a long time ago. Anyway, I had a, a live band on the back patio and my son was 10 at the time and he was just learning to play drums. He could play a little shuffle, a little swing, a little funk, right? Nice. So he sat in with the band and I'm starting to count the song and he goes, I got this. 
he wouldn't let me count the song. <laughs> I so I knew, that. I knew he was on his way. Right. That's that moment. You're like, uh, okay. Uh, yeah, exactly. I'm going to just count push away, the cart bro. down the hill. You're driving yeah. from here. <laughs> that's, that's it. That's <laughs> yeah, it. Absolutely. It yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now in, in your uh, J3 program, you offer all kinds of different uh, sub programs for the students. I want to talk about a few of them, but uh, we'll just talk mm -hmm. about one. Tell us about home recording for teens. Cause I know today's oh, yeah. kids are like computer geniuses. Yeah. So oh, yeah. when you get this going, I mean, are they ready to jump into garage band and all those other programs yeah. and do you give them any guidelines to record their project? Mm. Uh, and then do you do a, a sort of a recital once they've gotten, uh, gotten all their projects together? Yeah. So, okay. So for home recording, um, you know, that one is, there are a number of different programs that mm -hmm. I kind of teach that in a lot of people have garage band, but some people have PCs and they don't have garage band. So there's oh, actually right, a couple yeah. programs online too, that are free. Okay. So like band lab is one, mm -hmm. a lot of kids use band lab, very, very similar. And it has a latency thing that kind of yeah. kicks your latency out. Do you, are mm -hmm. you, do you, are you familiar with that BJ? Uh, a little bit. I know of, okay. of that. And then I know of um, like Audacity and, and Reaper oh. and whatnot. There's, I mean, right. for, for any one program, there's a half a dozen other, other ones out there. Sure. And I think where, where it really shines is just teaching, like having them, giving them that understanding of like how the whole thing works from top to yeah. bottom, regardless right. of what they're using, regardless of yeah, the, exactly. the, the specific tool. You, you, you mean you're, if you're giving them, if you're teaching them how to fish, they can fish <laughs> wherever they want to, you know, hundred really cool. percent doesn't yeah. matter what kind of fish they end up getting. They exactly. were able to get it. Yeah. Exactly. Right. So cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's lots of different programs and, and I, um, so, you know, I tend to kind of lean into say, but we start with like, well, what do you have available to you? And mm -hmm. if you don't already have one, here's a suggestion. Yeah. And then it's, and then, um, a big part of it is about how to get a good sound because I think that, um, you know, for instance, I have a microphone right now mm -hmm. and, you know, that makes a really big difference. If I were recording into my laptop speaker microphone, it would just sound different. And yeah. so there are settings you can change and these different things. And it's that sort of granular stuff that's simple, but really, really important mm -hmm. to be actually proud of the recording you've made that is makes the hugest difference. So yes, some of these kids come in, they've had some experience with GarageBand, but they're like, it just doesn't sound the way. Yeah. Okay. You know, I don't know what I did wrong. And so we, a lot, I do a lot of very, like, it's very personal. Everyone's sort of in their own, what are we working on? Some kids are like, well, I don't really know what to work on. And then I have all kinds of exercises to kind of okay. like get that creativity going and figuring out what their project's going to be. Right. Some kids just want to do like vocal arrangements. They just want to mm -hmm. sing and then harm layer their harmonies, you know, and some have like written a song and want to do voice and guitar yeah. and then like tap the table over here and layer that. <laughs> and, and then some, some kids want to, um, you know, they have not written a song. They don't really know, but they know a couple songs and they just mm -hmm. kind of want to know how to do it. And yeah. so then that's the project that, you know, that they play a song that they already know. And right. I teach them how to get the best sound. Yeah. So I, even in classes, I try to keep it really individual so that everyone's getting what, they are what their goals are a mm -hmm. big part of everything i do is about setting your own goals your own intention right. for the class or for the program and then even if we're together we're just helping each other along with our own unique goals and sometimes mm -hmm. it involves working together and sometimes it involves individual work yeah. um, and that one's taught virtually because then you can be in your bedroom in your safe space yeah. and we can all go dark for a minute and i can be here available to answer questions and we can be actively working on our projects yeah. And I'm available to answer questions sort of during the class as well, which is helpful. Yeah. 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 And you touched on, <clears throat> I think we've already sort of brushed on this as well, your philosophy. Mm -hmm. And that is with the kids, you're letting them explore what really speaks to them versus saying you have to learn these Hannon exercises before you right. can do your garage band project. Right. Uh, and, and, not to, and those are great exercises. I, I was going to say not to diminish you know, those. They're if good. You, There's a it, point where like you should do those exercises. Yes. <laughs> yeah. you know? yeah. It'll yeah. really help your fingers. Yeah. I promise. I know you hate it. You got to do it right. at this point. You got to do it. Yeah. But yeah. maybe not right away. <laughs> right. Uh, you know, if they want to yeah. start assembling chunks of uh, audio files in garage band and come up with the next killer song, more power to them. And then later on, yeah. maybe back up and, you know, yeah. 
personal story. I didn't learn to read on guitar till I was 26. And it was because, okay, now you need to do this. So, you know, I think right. your approach uh, works very well. Um, yeah, we've talked about your album and I gotta say, I, I know you told me that you really focused more on the teaching, which is tremendous. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I'm hoping there's going to be another one someday because when I when I listen to your songs, if I was a music critic, Julia, this is what, and I, I don't like that term critic. If I was somebody right. who reviewed albums and had things to say, yeah. this is what I would say about <clears throat> your album. Your voice is compelling and hauntingly beautiful. And, oh, and I truly mean that when you. I put on this song, Three in the A.M., Okay. Uh, again, it was another close the eyes and meditate moment because it was so right. beautiful. Wow, uh, yeah, we're we're going to play that song, but uh, give us a little background on where the lyrics and the melody came from. Okay. Yeah. For, oh, wow. Three in the AM. So um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was about three in the morning when that song was written. <laughs> um, so, um, you know, that song was written in a very quiet space time mm -hmm. room and um it was it started actually as an exploration of some really open chords that i had just learned i actually learned okay. guitar by writing songs because it was easiest for me to learn new chords by putting them together with other chords i knew so that actually was how i came to the feeling of the music mm -hmm. and then i just started singing along okay. So the story behind it is probably it's about searching, um, not quite knowing what you're searching for, mm -hmm. but feeling like you're searching. And at the time I was in Sedona, I wrote it in Sedona mm -hmm. and I was spending a lot of time hiking and listening to the world, to the earth okay. and the wind. Yeah. And, um, I felt like I was on a search. I felt like I was, I was calling myself a truth seeker mm -hmm. at the time. Like I was kind of like looking for, and so the song kind of um, speaks to what is kind of like a relationship, you know, it says you and I a lot, but I think more of it is like, I was probably singing more to myself yeah. about what I was searching for and then realizing maybe it's right here yeah. and okay. you know, yeah. maybe I'm losing sleep over something that's already here. Yeah. Great. Well, let's, uh, let's listen to the song, BJ. Cool. Great. Here we go. Beyond silences and through the dark I found you nowhere well, I simply want to be the love song singing in your Blowing softly through your hair I want your scar on my limbs My lips anticipating the taste of you The smell and the song of you Waiting for something to get me out of here And it seems like I'm searching for someone But he never appears And it 
It's a lonely miracle. This life is tired and it's wearing me thin. But if it's time for a miracle, you know I'm I'm ready and I'm willing to begin. And oh, love, well it's one of those addictions that I just can't shake. since I've heard that song. I'm so ah, glad you played it. Thank ah, you. I'm glad we played it too. <laughs> it's so beautiful. <laughs> you know, and Thanks. you paint such a perfect picture of somebody being awake at three in the morning and mm. thinking of these thoughts. Mm-hmm. So beautiful. Thank wow. you. Give me a minute. I got to come back down. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know what? Something you use in that song too, and it's one of four musical elements that you quoted uh, Christine Stevens talking about Mm -hmm. uh, in an interview I watched, and those being rhythm, melody, harmony, and silence. And Mm -hmm. you silence in that song so well. You stop. Right. There's this moment of air where the listener gets to take in what they just heard, and we go to Mm. the next idea. Uh, And we're going to kind of jump to our next little bit here because uh, musical theater is something I know that has been a part of your world as well. Uh, yes. And now is part of your daughter's world, if I understand correctly. Yes, she is. She's been bit by the theater <laughs> bug. hundred <laughs> percent. There's, there's just nothing like it. Uh, and no, no. you started the project then based on those four elements <clears throat> and um, have written now two books, I believe. Yep. Uh, and accompanying music. So the project is called Musical Tales for Modern Minds. Right. And you, the two that you have done are Haja, the bird who could fly for rhythm, and then right. Siku's song about melody. Right. So question on that. As you started on this project, uh, Julia, were you thinking these are going to be musical theater presentations or was it, no. I'm going to write this. So that wasn't the end game. No, no, it, it never was. My husband's always seen it. He's been okay. from the beginning. He's been like, Oh, these are great characters. This needs yeah. to be on stage. We, yeah. you know, all this stuff. And I never saw it visually. I, um, I was creating some, I wanted to create books, um, that, uh, um, represented what I was looking for in books for my kids, mm-hmm. to be honest. Okay. I wanted to, um, because we are a multicultural family, I was sort of having trouble finding books that reflected a lot of the, you know, certain specifics about what I wanted my kids to be mm-hmm. taking in when they were in preschool, kindergarten, first grade age. Okay. And, um, I also wasn't pl- making music all that much yeah. so, and I, and I, and I was looking for an outlet for creativity. And it, so it, the idea kind of came to me, um, after being in Sierra Leone the first time in 2010. Mm-hmm. And so Aja, the bird who's afraid to fly, that actually takes place in Sierra Leone. Um, and the little bird experiences her fears and excitement and all the different roller coaster of emotions through the beating of her heart. Mm. Yeah. And then as you're telling the story to your kids or to your classroom, you're drumming along with little Aja's heart mm-hmm. as she's learning to fly. So you're being introduced to an instrument from the area, which is the djembe. Yeah. And you're being int- introduced to the the element of rhythm. Um, and you're learning that rhythm is the heartbeat of the music, just mm-hmm. like our heartbeats are the rhythm of our lives. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, and, and, you know, I do a kind of a similar thing for melody. Um, mm-hmm. 
And then there will be two more, um, Harmony and Silence, which yeah. take place in also different countries and introduce different um, musical elements and different instruments from those right. places. Right. Yeah. So that's that cross-cultural music. We're right. all connected. Yep. It's all in yep. there, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Tell us a bit about Siku's song, because I just couldn't help but smile sure. when I read about that story. Oh, <laughs> I love that story. No, it's it's a sweet story about a about a little alpaca who loves mm -hmm. to sing. I don't know if you know this. This is sort of just, this is like a true fact that yeah. alpacas hum. Uh, oh, you know no, this? I didn't That's, know that, huh? That, yeah, so if you go to an alpaca farm, they're in there going, hmm, <laughs> hmm, hmm. Is that right? It, it, it's so cute. Oh yeah, they're oh, so yeah. cute. And so <laughs> I, I just, when I learned that fact and I started mm -hmm. like watching videos and we went to an alpaca farm, I was like, but what if one of these alpacas just like burst out in song? You know what I mean? <laughs> And they're all like, shh, you know, <laughs> we're supposed to be humming, you know. <laughs> so it sort of got me this, it just got me thinking about that, that one mm -hmm. sweet little alpaca who just can't help it, you know. <laughs> and that's what the story is about, that yeah. she's just trying, she's just trying to express herself. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, what happens is that she's, you know, she's being told she needs to quiet it down. This is not what we do. This is tradition. This is mm -hmm. how we, you know, do things. And she gets real mad and <laughs> runs up to the hills and, and hears a woman playing the pan flute while she's in okay. the hills. And there's like this melody that she hears. And then that yeah. sort of translates into something that's her own little melody that mm -hmm. she ends up teaching to her family. And, ah, sweet. you know, it, it changes some things and not other things about yeah. how their little alpaca community works. But it, yeah, yeah. it makes a change by creating her own little melody, teaching it to others and then right. sort of right. being allowed to express this new thing. <laughs> You know, you reminded me of, and I believe it's a Bob uh, Moog quote, BJ, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, his quote is every, uh, wait, wait a minute, every tradition was once an innovation. That's right. Mm. Did I get that right, BJ? I, I, yeah, I believe so. Yeah. I've been, I was thinking about the whole time you're talking about alpacas, the emperor's new groove and like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. were those alpacas or llamas? I don't know. I don't remember. That was a llama. They are yeah. different. There is a difference. <laughs> Tortoises, turtles, it's like that kind of thing, you know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Alpacas but, are fuzzier. Yeah. They're really fuzzy. Yeah, they're really cute. And talking about you know, the the bulk of the group of uh, alpacas are saying that's not what we do. We do this. Right. Obviously, yeah. that's their tradition, but at one point yeah. it had to be an innovation. And here comes right. Siku ah, saying point. I got this idea. I'm going to sing a little yeah. bebop or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then down exactly, the road, exactly. that becomes the tradition. So what and through done... this project, what was great about through this project was that I had the opportunity to create the music for this. Mm -hmm. So it was a really great reconnection for myself as a musician to yeah. start writing. And I was writing for kids. Yeah. And um, so you, this all started with musical theater. We were, you know, you were, you were asking yep. about that. Yeah. And um you know, the songs are catchy and they involve kids' voices mm -hmm. and they in, they highlight the instrument from that place. But th these characters are colorful. Yeah. They're dynamic. They, they, their environments are colorful and dynamic. You mm -hmm. can go on a trip around the world with these books. Ooh, and yeah. um, so um, it does lend itself to the stage. And... So um, I decided that I was going to explore that. What would it look like to put this on stage? So we, mm -hmm. we created a bit of a staged reading with live yeah. music experience yeah. here in Lancaster where I live. And from there, it morphed into a show meant for theater for, the, uh, for young audiences, for mm -hmm. the very young. Okay. So like, like one to five-year-olds to create interactive theater experiences for them mm -hmm. that are... Um, less language and more movement and um they're much more physical yeah. and it's a you know and the, the music becomes a character in it right. and the kids become invited to be part of the environment they they learn to fly and um this we were going to be doing this at joe's movement emporium uh <laughs> almost exactly this time last year and okay. the, right. you know yeah. COVID, of course so yep. so that's been a bummer so we haven't really rectified what that's going to be yet but it's you know it's it's in the works and um you know there's something about entering into a story that really changes lives and theater just has this way of you know shifting 
you just you experience something you you leave changed at every show it's just yeah. true right one way you, or another. <laughs> you get out of whatever your world is yeah and put yourself in this completely different world for yeah 100%. but shows are an hour and a half two maybe three hours right. Uh, right. I experienced that in playing for pit orchestras. You're in that world mm. for that amount of time. And right. it does. It changes you. It opens your eyes mm -hmm. up to different parts of humanity. Not always good. Hopefully mm -hmm. mostly good. Uh, Susical, one of my favorite crazy little shows oh, yeah. to play because it just takes you <laughs> into a complete one. fantasy world. Yeah. That's wonderful. Uh, so, I mean, kudos to you and congratulations to your daughter. And I, I just yeah. you know encourage her to continue on in that world. Uh, and certainly look forward to uh, the other two books in this series, and, and yeah. want to see it uh, to want to see it get back on stage. So to that yes. end, Julia, we are at the hour, and uh, oh man, I know it just went like that, didn't it? <laughs> but There's so much more to talk about. <laughs> uh, I know. Trust this me, this has been really to... great, guys. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's been great having you. And I, I think every time we do this, we have to have a part two for each of our guests because yeah, there is yeah. so much, so much more that we can talk about. But we have this great promo video uh, for Haja that I hope I'm saying the name correctly. That uh, yeah, Haja, yeah, uh -huh. Haja, okay. That I want to share with everybody. I hope it I hope somebody out there sees and says, "Well, we need to do this in our theater. We need to do it here uh, and yeah, help you get great. going." You know and get get a nice running head start into, into awesome. 2020 21 whatever year it is 21 22 <laughs> doesn't even matter Jeez. anymore i don't know <laughs> i'm getting too excited because it's I'm, anyway um thank you from the bottom of my heart and and from all of us here at the museum and if you're out on the west coast sometime please come see us at the museum i think for I me will. personally since i book our school tours and drum circle is part oh, of yeah. the school tour having you oh, come yeah. in and lead a drum circle would just Take I'm it there. off the charts. I'm so. there. Seed planted. It's going to happen. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Thanks nice. for that invitation. I, I appreciate it, it Bill. This yeah. was really great. Thanks. Thanks so much for having me. And thank you. And yeah. this has really been great. And it was great to meet your kids in the process. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. I felt Still like got I met one your... bouncing around here somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just see one just and I met your dog there for a second because he or she kind of yeah. went walking and lied down Sleeping in front of the amp. Right so now. yeah. <laughs> thank you. We're gonna play this thank beautiful you. video promo. Everybody look at how colorful great. it is. Uh and awesome. the story is so uplifting. And BJ, I'll let you take us out from here. But Julia, thank you so much. Thank you, Bill. Here we go. Aja feels her heartbeat pounding All her flying feathers are in Jump, Aja, jump Into the big wide world Be who you are Your story is beginning And I want to see you fly So cool. Yeah. I cool. would watch that. Thanks, that guys. Awesome. It looks like it's a awesome. lot of fun to be involved oh. with and not just to, you know, as an audience member, but as a participant, as a uh, oh, so as an artist in that production. It looks so cool. Jeez. Thanks. Yeah, wow. it's super fun. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, Julie, I want to thank you again for your time and sharing your story you. and your experiences and your passion for making music. Mr. Bill, thank you again for oh, leading the conversation. <laughs> I am actually, um, we did have a few folks stop by. Brian is funny. Brian's one of our volunteers at the, here at the Museum <laughs> of Making Music, and he's actually on his way here to the museum because he has to put in his shift today. He's like, I'm so sorry I'm missing this, but he was also curious. Do you do any finger style guitar as well? Because when we were, I do some the... finger picking stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think he. I caught... don't. I wouldn't call myself, uh, you know, a finger style player. I, yeah. I, I dabble in exploring as I'm writing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, as a, as a drummer, I would not ca call myself any thing close to yeah. being a finger style guitarist so but well, I think especially when you're the daughter of stanley jordan it's like i'm <laughs> like i mean 
I play, you know, <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. And then uh, Bill Bradbury, the uh, composer and arranger here in San Diego, who plays uh, has the mandolin orchestra. He says, "Well done." You know, he has cool. to run, to run to another meeting, but he really enjoyed learning about all your work and everything. Cool. So it was good oh, to see so many folks on today. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and take us out, and we're going to look and see what we have coming up on the horizon. So uh, the last Mom at Home of the Month we have coming up on Friday, June 25th. We're going to be taking next week off as we're opening to the public on June 15th. So we're going to skip over June 18th. Uh, and I'm actually going to be uh, taking off a little bit and a little, little time off for myself. So uh, we're going to come back to you with Mom at Home with David Castaneda's, a uh, local San Diego percussionist uh, and scholar and academic as far as uh, Afro-Cuban and Latin percussion is concerned. Very knowledgeable, very talented, and he's going to share uh, this, uh, his experiences with that and uh, a little bit more about these music musical cultures with us. So we're looking forward to that. And then we're going to be posting more of our Mom at Home uh, summer schedules online as they come up. And uh, so look for those on our website, museumofmakingmusic.org. If you haven't already, please visit our website and uh, get your admission. If you're in town, we're opening up to the public on Tuesday, June 15th. We're so excited. We're doing our preview run with all of our members this weekend friday saturday sunday and are welcoming back everyone to the museum of making music to see what the renovation has done and changed for us here if you'd like to learn more about that visit museum of making music.org slash reopening until then everyone thank you for joining us today thank you for being part of mom at home and we hope to see you again next time until then take care and have a wonderful weekend <laughs> Bye bye